I'm Rachel Cox. I'm an assistant professor of photography at the University of Iowa, and I'm here at the Southeast Museum of Photography for the opening reception and lecture of my project, Shiny Ghost. So the project Shiny Ghost is a photography-based project that spans a time period of about 10 years from 2003 to around 2013. And the photographs act as a type of extended portrait of my grandmother. So in the series, there's um, sort of traditional um, direct portraits, there's still lifes, there's some landscapes, there's sort of snapshot, uh, use of snapshot photography, and there's also staged and like constructed imagery. So there's a lot of different styles of photography in the exhibition because over the course of the 10 years that I photographed my grandmother, I'm also like maturing as an artist and I'm starting to use different types of camera technology, sort of trying out the technology by photographing my grandparents. And this is a project that took a long time for me to feel confident in showing on a larger scale like this because um, it wasn't something that I considered art or something that I thought might be interesting to other people. And it really wasn't until around, um, towards the end of the project, around 2010, 2011, that I began to take it more seriously as something that um, would actually be able to fit into the experiences of other people. So the exhibition here at the Southeast Museum of Photography shows about the last two and a half to three years of um, the time span, maybe 2010 to 2013, of when I was taking pictures of her. And that um, is also a time period where um, you know, my grandmother had um, big di diagnosed with sort of a rare brain disease. And so the images take on a little bit of a different um, atmosphere, if you will. They're a little bit more um, intentionally, uh, uh, the images are more intentional in terms of how they're constructed instead of being patient and sort of waiting for these moments of leisure and casual conversation, which were instances that I normally photograph my family in. Um, I'm hyper aware of the fact that I have a very finite amount of time left to photograph my grandmother. So there's images that are intentional, you know, images of objects that were going to be passed on to me. Images I've always wanted to make with my grandmother, images I've always wanted to make inside of her home. And so the pictures, therefore, are um, a bit more intentional than the work had been maybe in the early 2000s. So, um, like I had mentioned before, within the types of photography, um, that I'm using to act as this like extended portrait. There are a lot of photographs of objects and still lifes, and most of these images are made um, after the ones that I chose to include in the exhibition are made after my grandmother passed away when I was going through her home and kind of helping pack up belongings and just go through stuff. And um, there were a lot of things I would come across that I was really sort of struck by in terms of not knowing what the story behind them was. And also, you know, being intrigued by these objects, but also being slightly sort of saddened that I would never know what that story might be. And an example of this is, um, as I was going through one of her bedside tables, um, I found this blue winter 1995 ribbon that was folded up inside her Bible. And this is something that um, I found really intriguing. Um, I, I don't know what this ribbon was doing there. She obviously wasn't in some, you know, Kind of competition that I was un unaware of, but clearly this had some sort of significance, or maybe it didn't, you know, and I'm just kind of projecting onto the sort of narrative I want to find in that object. So when I found that ribbon, I, I put it up on the wall and I photographed it, and this is what I did with a lot of objects that I would find that I was interested in. I would take them outside of sort of the context in which I found them, make a sort of straightforward, straightforward photograph, and then have that photograph rather than necessarily keeping that object. And then there's there's another photograph in the exhibition, it's also in the monograph of the project, where there's a uh, Princess Diana, like porcelain celebrity figurine, and the figurine is only about 18 inches tall, but this was part of a broader collection of porcelain celebrity figurines that my grandmother very much cherished. And so this was also the only thing I broke when I was packing up the things. And, um, I think at the time when I had made the picture of the Diana, I later then realized that this picture visually is very similar to another picture in the project where my grandmother's wearing this kind of crushed blue velvet robe standing outside. And it's one of the first portraits I made of her where her sort of like ailing um, health was more visible in her outward appearance. So in the book, those two images are sort of next to each other as this type of diptych where you're looking at um, what I would consider sort of the epitome of like style and grace and glamour 
and you know the fact that um, these things are um, you know still mortal and they still um, will age and they still unfortunately have lives that we wish would go on for longer but they don't and um, I was seeing a lot of similarities between some of the objects I would find and just sort of the larger narrative that I was dealing with um, you know to loss and grief. Um, so another thing that um, I wanted to make sure I honored in the photographs that I took of her was this um, this uh, attention to you know making yourself look um, the best you, the best you wanted to the best you could when you'd go out in public or when you would really just receive guests. And my grandmother is from this generation of um, specifically Southern women that. Um, really believed in, you know, having your hair done, making sure you had all your makeup on, having your jewelry on, like no matter what time of day this was. And so this is something I just became really familiar with as I grew up. And it was such a huge part of her, of her being and her essence that I wanted to make sure that this came across in many different ways in the photographs that I made of her. So there's a lot of photographs of her hair, there's photographs of her belongings, of her jewelry. Um, you know, there's, there's photographs of, um, you know, these objects that kind of symbolize that um, vanity, but in an endearing way. So the images behind me of the wiglets that she had that she would like attach to an existing hairdo to make um, that much more awesome um, were objects that I, I, I loved. And I, again, I felt um, a sort of reverence for them, but I also found them to be like very perplexing sorts of objects and um, photographed them sort of removed from context so you could just appreciate um, the beauty of them as, as objects in themselves. Throughout a lot of the work uh, that's here at the museum and then also that's in the monograph, there's like these re recurring characters. Um, in addition to my grandfather, uh, there's also uh, a chihuahua Bailey and a, and a Persian cat. And um, these animals were sort of with her by her side all the time, especially the dog. The dog outlived my grandmother, um, and he makes frequent appearances in a lot of the images. And I felt like this was sort of like her sole animal and this extension of herself. He was like her little guard dog, and no one could really touch him. And so he was um, not only like this this little little furry guy that was already always near her but just like the sounds he made and his energy was just made up the kind of atmosphere that I grew to become familiar with and comfortable with and so I, I appreciate him also as this kind of comic relief or humor that runs throughout the book as well because I think it's fairly relatable like you know your grandparents or your parents or someone in your family who has an animal that's like totally unapproachable and kind of a jerk but um, also really, you know, love, you know, my grandmother really loved this dog and so that was also something really special that I sort of wanted to honor in the pictures too. You know, I don't want to say that the atmosphere and like interior design of my grandparents' house was universal, like, because you know, I am um, like a fourth generation Texan, my family is all from Texas, so I think regionally probably there's some specificity to how um, the dynamics of the house worked, like we spent a lot of time outside, most of our gatherings were outside, which is why there's so many images that have been made on the patio in their home. And then my grandparents also, uh, you know, they kind of were married and raised a young child um, in this post-depression era. era. And uh, I think my grandmother was always really concerned with um, having nice things and um, getting a good job that you work at for like 50 years. You know, my, you know, my grandpa worked a job where um, he had a, you know, he had a really awesome retirement package and these sorts of things don't happen anymore. So they worked like a really long time to be able to acquire things that um, hinted at a particular status. Even though by the, they were by no means wealthy, they were solidly middle class. Um, they both grew up extremely poor. So to have the Cadillac, you know, to have a brand new car, to have like a leather fur and leather coat from Neiman Marcus, like these things were to be aspired to and definitely cherished. And these are the things that my grandmother wanted me to have, especially items of like fashion and jewelry. And these are things that I didn't really connect with her on, but I appreciated um, in terms of what the significance 
was from her, and that's why those things are also photographed. Like there's an image of a fur coat, and there's images of um, these jewelry boxes um, that I would always play with as a kid because they were the like velvet blocked kind. And so again, there's you know I'm, I'm always thinking about ways to like honor that um, relationship or honor those things in a way that might not have been what my grandmother had in mind, but was sort of like the best way I knew how to do that with my photographs. The work that's behind me is uh, the two wiglet pieces that um, are made on just like a red silk shirt that was hers that I photographed outside. And then the frames are um, sampled. It's a, it's a color sample from the actual photograph that then a paint color was made from. And that particular red is uh, intentionally used throughout the series. It's also um, the same red that's on the cover of the book as a way to um, not only add like visual consistency, but also um, amp, you know, kind of like amp up that color that was sort of like her power color, her favorite color, a color that she wore a lot, a color that um, she was surrounded by. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of use of red and there's also use of gold in the project because these were sort of the embodiment of um, how she would like adorn herself in some ways.